All right, so I want to warn you as this video starts, this video might be maybe offensive to you, might be challenging, might be annoying, it might just be a lot of things that you might not want to hear right now, but it's important that I talk about this, it's important that I get these things off my chest. So the subject of this video is why we aren't happy, or you know, five reasons that I've thought of or discovered in my analysis of why we aren't happy. And by I mean we, I mean we, as in you and I, people in general. And I'm not making this as, oh, I'm really happy and I'm this like enlightened being and you're this minimal person who needs to listen to what I say. I'm saying this from the perspective of, I'm a human being that has emotions like every other human being. And I think about them and I learn things and I study them. So that's what I wanna share with you in this video is five reasons why we're not happy. And you might think, oh, that's so negative. You should focus on the positive. Well, you know, you can't hit a target that you can't see, and you can't solve a problem that you're unaware of. So if, if you're like pretty much every single person in the history of humanity, you probably had a moment in your life where you thought, you know what? I'm not really happy. Why am I not happy? That's a good question to ask yourself because it can open some doors. So anyways, enough introduction. Let's get to the five reasons. So the first reason that I think people are not happy and we live our lives just unexamined is because we're afraid. We're afraid of what other people are gonna think, we're afraid of what our parents are gonna say, our friends, our family, our significant others. We're afraid of what people will think if we say or do what we wanna do. And then as a tangent to that, we seek approval from other people, we seek attention from other people because deep down we're really we feel insecure about ourselves, we feel kind of shaken up, and we feel afraid. We feel afraid of what other people are going to think, or what they'll do, or what they'll say about us, what they won't say about us, when in reality, it doesn't actually matter. So the second reason is we lie to ourselves. We lie to ourselves constantly about our life, about our feelings, about our desires, about everything about the world. And as a result of that, we distract ourselves. We watch too much TV, we numb ourselves out with drugs or food or any sort of any sort of thing. We numb ourselves out because we have this deep down just discord and disharmony within ourselves. So we lie to ourselves about, you know, things like, oh yeah, I really, I really do like this job, or oh yeah, I really do want to go to school here, or oh, I really do like this relationship, or I really do like this person. When deep down, you really don't. But because of things that we'll get into later, we feel pressured and we feel like, oh, well, you know, I really don't want to do that, but I feel like I should because my parents said I should or religion said I should or my guru said I should or the yoga sutra said I should or all these things that are pressuring us, causing us to not really actually be true to ourselves and to, in effect, lie to ourselves. Meaning someone comes up and says, oh, how's your day going? You know, it might be the worst day of, and you're like, oh, it's great because you think, oh, well, this is the box, this is the pre-programmed response of this that's what they want to hear and if I don't say it they might think I'm weird they might judge me or might whatever so I'm gonna to lie to myself I'm gonna to lie to the other person I'm gonna to be totally dishonest and what happens is we start that we do it in little things we do it in little things and then all of a sudden it becomes bigger things and bigger things and bigger things and we just continually lie to ourselves and then we wonder oh my god how did I get here how did I get into a situation that I hate it's because you let the little lie slip. Oh yeah, sure. You know, I really don't want to do that, but it's just, it's just for right now. I'll do it. And then that little thing. Oh well, you know, I already did that, so I'll just do that. When in reality, that's how things work. Because if you've studied persuasion at all, there was a, um, there was a, a, a book that I read, and it, it listed this example of how the Chinese communists got uh, American soldiers to denounce. Uh, America to denounce democracy and to denounce uh, America in general and to think communism in China was the way to go. And they didn't just go up to him and beat them over the head and say, look, communism is the way to go. They said, look, maybe, you know, maybe you think all of communism is bad, but just try to find one thing that might be okay. And then see what they did is they got him to say, okay, well just, you know, just write your name on this piece of paper saying you don't like communism. And then they took that little step. They said, okay, well, that was good. So basically without doing the whole story, what they did is little baby steps because they took one little baby step and then took the next one, took the next one, took the next one. And then at the end, 
they were doing something that they totally would have never done. But it's because they took the first little step and then it snowballed. So the third reason, after we're afraid and we lie, the third reason is we pretend. We pretend to be something we're not. Like I referenced earlier, we pretend to be happy when we're sad. We pretend to be sad when we're happy. We pretend to be, um, you know, a nine to five kind of mainstream person when we're really not. We pretend to be a Christian when we hate it. We pretend to be a Catholic if we hate it. We pretend to be a Buddhist if we hate it. All of these things we pretend to do. We pretend to be the nice person. We pretend to be the giving person or the sad person or the depressed person or the angry person. We take on all these things. We pretend to do them because for whatever reason, they're part of our identity or we think that other people will expect it of us, so we just do it. When in reality, it's based on a lie. It's based on us not actually being true to ourselves. So basically, we pretend and then we try to be something that we are not. Meaning if we're meant to be a musician, but someone told us we should be a doctor, we try, we pretend to be the doctor. And we're miserable because of it, because it's not what we're meant to do, it's not what we want to do. So the last reason, which kind of ties it all in together, is that one of the main reasons we're unhappy and we struggle with ourselves and we beat ourselves up is pressure from, in a general sense, the collective ego, culture, and society, but more specifically, you know, religion, uh, morals, our parents, our gender roles, or our societal roles, or our spiritual practice, or our enlightenment, or yoga, or our guru, or all of these things are pushing these, you know, predetermined roles and boxes and self-images upon us, and then it's conflicting with us because we think, you know what? I really do want to go eat this steak with my friends out right now, but I read in a book that if I do it, I'm not spiritual and I'll never be enlightened. And my guru said if I do this, then I'll be bad. And we freak out and we trip out all these things. And we will, but in reality, we're pretending to be something that we're not. We're lying to ourselves because we're afraid that, oh no, I won't be enlightened. Or, oh no, my guru will judge me. Or, oh no, all my yoga friends won't think I'm spiritual. Or whatever it happens to be. That's just one example. It could be... You could be a Christian, or you could be a Buddhist, you could be anything, any sort of spiritual practice or religion that's creating a predetermined role for you, a box for you to fit in. But really, you know, we're, we humans are complex creatures. We're constantly changing. And we're bigger than boxes. We're bigger than self-images. We're bigger than predetermined roles. And the more we can let go of those things and just be ourselves and do what we want to do, obviously within reason and within balance and without harming other people, without harming ourselves, then we're going to be happy, we're going to feel more free, and we're going to be able to drop all this battle of like, well, I really want to do this, I really feel that deep down that I should do it, but I can't because this external authority figure says that I shouldn't or I can't or I must or I whatever. So those are really the main reasons that I've been able to discern of lately of why, you know, why we're really not happy, why I've personally experienced a lot of unhappiness in the course of my life because of these exact reasons. And basically, the general point here is that all of this, all of these factors that I've just identified lead to a level of really falsehood and disharmony and ultimately just bullshit. I mean, to put it bluntly and mundanely, that's really what it boils down to. But sometimes, you know, we take those first baby steps, we take those first baby steps, and then we get down a road, we get in a path, and we don't even know we're there because we have initiated the snowball process and then, you know, we just get used to being numb. We get used to feeling empty. We get used to feeling like, you know, this is just the way life is. I'm a zombie. I'm a robot. I'm not alive because I got to push away all my real feelings and push away all what I really think and feel because people might judge me. People might think I'm weird. Uh, I'm scared. They might not accept me. My uh, culture might not think I'm fitting the mold. My spiritual practice might disown me. All this crap, we have all these pressures which we constantly toss around in our head which cause discord and disharmony within ourselves. But ultimately, if we can just actually be honest and be real and acknowledge our feelings and acknowledge what we really think, what we really feel, and the more we can actually express that, the better you will feel. And I just challenge you to try it. You'll feel like that there's this weight being just lifted off of your chest and you just feel lighter and just more free and flowing because you're actually being yourself. You're actually expressing yourself. Which if you want to be cosmic and spiritual about it, if you're being your true self, 
you're being in harmony with the cosmos. You're being in harmony with everything that exists. And if you're not being that, if you're being some sort of fake, you know, predetermined label or uh, social norm or image or whatever it is that's been put upon you and you're just identifying with that and holding on to it, then you're really creating discord and blocking yourself from the, uh, the harmonious energy of the cosmos, from the giving nature of the cosmos, whatever you want to say it, if you want to get kind of spiritual about it. But it's really just a common sense, easily tangible, easily experiential thing that you can test for yourself. You can test in your relationships. You can test in your, everything in your life. You can apply it. And I can tell you that when you get real with yourself and come from a real place, people will respond. And people will see that and they'll be real with you because everyone's walking around waiting for other people to take the lead, for everyone to, you know, open up and accept because we're afraid. We're afraid of being judged. We're afraid of not being accepted. All these things, which is okay and natural because we're humans, we have emotions and we have feelings and we're all still just children in, you know, adults' bodies, basically. So hopefully that's been helpful. Just a lot of stuff that I've been thinking about lately um, and wanted to get it out there. And it's just real. It's me being real and coming from what I'm actually going through and experiencing myself. It's not something I read in a book or it's not something I'm just regurgitating to you because it sounds cool or, you know, gave me a buzz last week. It's just some real emotion and thoughts from my heart and from my mind, from my body, from all of these different things. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. I look forward to hearing your thoughts, your questions, your comments, whatever. Post them below, and I will talk to you soon.